Hi, I'm George Hess, and I'd like to speak with you for a few minutes about the use of headings in posters. Headings are used to orient readers and convey key points. So let's start from the very top, so to speak, which is the title of your poster. The title is arguably one of the most important headings that you'll create. An ideal title will convey your main message in a very short, concise form, thus delivering that message even to people who do nothing but read the title of your poster and walk on to the next one. Let's take a look at an example. This poster by Adam Luckenbach and his colleagues examines the effects of temperature on southern flounder sex determination. Take a look at their title. Southern flounder exhibit temperature dependent sex determination. There we have in seven words a summary of what they found in their work. It tells you pretty much their bottom line. Now some viewers have complained that the hyphenated temperature dependent clause caused them some confusion. They were wondering, well, temperature of what? Well, we can fix that pretty easily and keep the title short, still seven words. Water temperature determines the sex of southern flounder. Seven words tells the whole story. If the viewers do nothing else, they've learned something. An alternative, if you can't create a results-oriented title, is to ask a provocative question. The hope here is that viewers might be interested in learning what the answer to the question is. So a couple of examples. Can suburban greenways provide high-quality bird habitat? Will manatees still exist in 2100? Now you can imagine that if you take these posters to a conference on conservation, let's say, there will be people who are interested in understanding or finding out the answer to those two questions. Now in this poster, June has actually done something else. She's added a subtitle. Because the question, will manatees still exist in 2100, there's a lot of different things that you could examine to address that question, but June tells us that she's going to look specifically at the effect of cold winters and watercraft accidents. So she has a provocative title, and then she also makes it clear to potential viewers what the scope of her examination is going to be. What you want to avoid at all costs are boring titles, like the effect of substance A on protein B. Assuming you've done the work, wouldn't it be much more provocative and interesting to state substance A inhibits production of protein B? Number one, it tells people that you've actually done the work and you've found an answer. Number two, if that's all they read, the viewer has something to take away in terms of a message from your work. Now let's talk about headings as an organizational construct. Headings help viewers find what they're looking for. The most common headings, and almost all of you have certainly seen these, are introduction, objectives, methods, results, and conclusion. Quite boring, yes, I agree, but just about everyone I can think of knows what they mean and what can be found under each one. Unless there's a compelling reason that merits a different approach, I would say that you should just use these headings. Let's go back to the flounder poster. Pretty standard headings here with the appropriate material under each one. The introduction provides the big picture context of the problem and tells you why it matters. The objective tells you what these researchers set out to do specifically. The methods summarizes how they did it. The results section summarizes their findings backed with data, in this case graphics, graphical data. In some posters it may be tables, although I would argue that graphs are always preferred in posters. Finally, there's a conclusion section that relates their, their results, their findings, back to the big picture context introduced in the introduction section. June's Manatee poster uses the same set of headings, introduction, objectives, methods, results, 
and here they've used the word discussion. We would recommend actually changing that to conclusion. Discussion is more appropriate for, for manuscripts, for papers, um, or for hopefully what happens with a bunch of people standing around your poster talking to you. Now let's look at a third example. What's going on here? Do you feel a bit disoriented? Well, if you do, you're not alone. In fact, about half of the viewers who've spoken to me about this poster, this is a poster that I frequently show in workshops, uh, along with the other ones that we're looking at, have said that they are lost when they look at this poster. Now, there's a number of reasons for that, but the most relevant one for our topic here, the topic of headings, is that these headings give no clue as to what order you should read things in. There's no organizational construct here. They're completely unfamiliar to most people, so they feel lost. Now what we were actually trying to do here is use these headings as a sort of a hypertext so that viewers in a hurry could read nothing but the white words in the blue boxes and get the main idea of the poster. Now if you look at it for a minute from that perspective, from me having told you that, maybe it makes some sense. But if I have to stand there and tell everybody that, and half my audience doesn't get it if I don't tell them that, I have a problem. The most common suggestion for fixing this, and people weren't saying necessarily to completely throw it away, was to reduce anything down to at most two lines, because apparently when we get larger or longer than two lines, people are no longer recognizing it as a heading. And the other suggestion is to either increase the white space between the columns or to put some explicit bars between the columns to make it clear that this is supposed to be read column by column rather than across in rows. Again, headings are intended to orient viewers. And while it's fun to experiment like we did with the Greenways poster, you should do so carefully and you should always be aware of the potential to confuse viewers. You might want to field test it with some colleagues before you take it to the conference. Headings are also used to convey key points. That was actually the intent in the Greenway poster, although it didn't quite work. Now there are other ways and places that you can do this. Let's go back to some of our other examples. In the flounder poster, which you've seen already, Adam and his colleagues, as we, as we discussed, used a results-oriented title that makes what they did very clear. But look what else they did. They actually used headings for each of their graphs that interpret the graphs for you. So the format they've used is they tell you what they found. So if you're in a hurry, you can read that and move along. If you want to see how they determined that, you can examine their evidence in the graphic below. Temperature affects sex determination. Here's my evidence. Rearing temperature affects growth. Here's my evidence. Growth does not differ by sex. Here's the evidence. It's a very effective technique. In the Manatee poster, June used headings to help her viewers walk through the different models that she applied to examine the effect of cold winters and watercraft. She has a no effect model, a temperature effect model, a boat effect, and a combined effect model. Despite other shortcomings, there's actually a pretty good use of headings in the Greenway poster. Let me draw your attention to the lower right-hand corner. Now, in total, there's a really neat combination of heading use here. First of all, this heading, Greenways for Development-Sensitive Forest Birds Might Conflict with Intense Recreational Use, summarizes the essence of our findings. Below it, in words and pictures, we show exactly what we mean. People and managers prefer this for these reasons. Forest birds tend to prefer this for these reasons. And in the following heading, we offer a potential solution. Now, if we'd made this poster a bit less crowded and this more obvious, 
it could really be a great example of the use of heading in posters. Now one last thing before we summarize. You want to find ways to make your headings stand out. And that usually involves a combination of typeface, font size, and color. Again, let's go through our three examples. In Adam's flounder poster, he's made his heading stand out by using a different typeface. This is a sans serif font versus a serif font in the main text. It's also bold and somewhat larger. Now, arguably, they could be larger still. There's plenty of room to do that. But they do stand out even as they are, as do the headings above his graphics. In the Manatee poster, June uses bold, larger font and also numbers her headings 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which has the side benefit of making the order of reading clear for those who read in order. Topic for another discussion. And in the Greenway poster, whether or not you like the form of the headings, there isn't much of a question that in the blue boxes with the white letters, they do stand out quite a bit from the rest of the poster. Okay, finally to summarize. Headings orient readers and convey key points. As we've talked about, the title is probably your most important heading and ideally will convey your main message. I like to call that a results-oriented title. Headings help viewers find what they're looking for, the most common introduction objectives, methods, results, conclusion, are probably the best way to go. Headings also convey key points, as we saw in the examples that we had. But to do so, to do all of these things, headings have to stand out, and that's usually done with a combination of typeface, font size, and color. Finally, I'd like to thank uh, Adam and his colleagues and June for allowing us to use their poster in this presentation. I'd like to thank you for spending your time looking at this and I hope you found it useful. Good day.